Hello children. In this video, we continue part 3 of the lesson, The Taming of the Shrew by William Shakespeare. We learnt in the first two parts that a wealthy merchant of Padua has two daughters. The eldest, Catherine, a very forceful character with a fiery temper who was a loud-tongued scold and was known in Padua as Catherine the Shrew. The younger daughter was gentle and pretty young lady, Bianca, who had several suitors who wished to marry her. At the same time, Petruccio, a young confident man from Verona, arrives in Padua and hears about Catherine. He resolves to marry her and teach her obedience. At the church the next day, Catherine unwillingly awaits her bridegroom. Patricio finally arrives late, dressed in outlandish clothes, and he causes a scene. After the ceremony, he immediately leaves for Verona with his new wife. On reaching her new home, Catherine is mistreated by Patricio and is denied food and rest. Patricio's aim is to tame Catherine while pretending to act out of a desire for her benefit. We had learned the story till this incident. So let's turn over to page 101 and know what happened to Patricio and his new bride, Catherine. And as you can see, this paragraph on page number 101 is rather too big. It's a full page paragraph and ends on the next page halfway. So I'll divide the paragraphs into uh, small blocks and we'll read it from here. So let's read. The next day, Patricio pursued the same course, still speaking kind words to Catherine. So they arrived in, the, uh, in their new house. Remember what he did on her first day in his house? Now, from there, what did Patricio do? He pursued, he followed the same. He did the same thing, speaking to her in kind words. But when she attempted to eat, finding fault with everything that was set before her, throwing the breakfast on the floor as he had done the supper. So what did he do? He was always kind. His words were very kind to Catherine. But whenever she attempted to eat something, he used to find fault with everything that was set before her. Whatever was brought in front of her on the dining table, he would throw the breakfast on the floor as he had done the supper. Even the previous night, uh, he had done the same thing. And Catherine, the haughty Catherine, the proud, arrogant Catherine, haughty means the proud, arrogant Catherine, was fain to beg. So what happened to her? She was compelled to beg the servants would bring her secretly a morsel of food. So Catherine was so hungry that she begged the servant to bring her secretly, without uh, Patricia knowing, a morsel of food, a little a little piece or a bite or a small piece of food because she was so hungry. But they being instructed by Patricio, who the servant being instructed by Patricio, replied they dare not give her anything unknown to their master. So the servants told her that they dare not do that because they feared their master. Ah, said she, did he marry me to famish me? So, uh, she told the servants, did he marry me to uh, make me feel hungry, to starve me, Fam famish means to starve me. Beggars that come to my father's door have food given them. So whenever beggars come to my father's house, uh, he, they are provided with enough food. And here, what is happening to her? She is very hungry. But I who never knew what it was to entreat for anything. I am starved for want of food, giddy for want of sleep, 
with oaths kept waking and with brawling fret. So she's saying here, she's telling the servant, look, and she's solicuring, she's talking to herself. But I, who never knew what it was to entreat for anything. So she is talking about herself that she never knew to entreat, that is to beg, to request someone for something. And here she is starved for want of food. Here she is hungry. She is starving for want of food. Here you can see that uh, Catherine is soliloquying. What is soliloquy? Soliloquy means she is talking to herself. So she is alone and she is talking to herself. She is saying all these things to herself. I am starved for want of food. Because I need food. I am starved. I am hungry. And I go giddy for want of sleep. I am uh, half unconscious or I am dizzy for want of sleep. Because I can't sleep. Because Patricia used to find fault with her bed and throw everything down so she couldn't sleep properly. And with oats kept, uh, it says here with oats kept waking. So I declare I kept waking and with brawling fed. So with noisy quarrels I am fed and that with, so I do not get any food but I am fed with brawling that is loud noisy quarrels i am given now noise uh, loud noisy quarrels and that which vexes me that which troubles me annoys me more than all he does it under the name of perfect love and what uh, annoys me what uh, angers me what uh, uh, makes me annoyed is that he does it who, he, who is this he Patricio does this all under the garb or under the name of being in perfect love. Means he loves me so much that he is taking care of me and not feeding me, not uh, starving me and uh, doing all these things in the garb or in the pretext of loving me. Pretending that if I sleep or eat it were present death to me. And he is pretending, he is feigning that if I sleep or eat, uh, it would be immediate death to me. So here her soliloquy was interrupted by the entrance of Patricio. So here at this point, what happened? Her soliloquy, meaning her talk with herself. Soliloquy means uh, it's actually a word in drama where uh, uh, an actor uh, has to talk to himself in order so that the uh, viewers or the those who have come to see the uh, play, the ones who are seeing the play, they understand what is the feeling of the person, the actor. Uh, what is the feeling the person is having in his mind or her mind. So here Catherine is talking to herself. And then at that point, Patricia enters the room. He, not meaning she should be quite starved, and he, Patricio, did not mean or did not really think that she should be starved, had brought her a small portion of meat. So Patricio brought a, her a little a piece of meat and he said to her, How fares my sweet Kate? So he came and told her, How are you doing, my dear sweet Kate? Here, love, you see how diligent I am. So he is saying, here love, you can see how diligent I am, how, uh, uh, how good I am and that I am thinking of you and I have brought you this piece of meat. I have dressed you meat, your meat myself and what have I done? I have quick cooked or I have prepared this meat myself. I am sure this kindness merits thanks and then he said that uh, I, I am very much sure that this merit, this quality of mine uh, requires uh, thanks from your side. What not a word? And you are not saying even a single word for me. Nay, then you love not the meat. Oh, no, you do not love the meat then. And all the pains I have taken it to no purpose. Oh my God, all the pains, all the efforts I took and it is of no uh, use, no purpose. 
So he then ordered the servants to take the dish away. So immediately he brought it for her. He talked to her and immediately he got angry and said, you are not thanking me enough. And then he ordered the servants to take the dish away. So he is um, luring her. He is showing her the dishes. He is showing her the wonderful food which she was really hungry and wanted to have. But then saying that she is not thanking and that she doesn't want it. He is throwing the, he is telling the servants to take it away. And uh, then he ordered the servants to take the dish away. He ordered the servant to take the uh, food away. Extreme hunger which had abated the uh, pride of Catherine. So what happened? Extreme hunger had abated means reduced the prize, uh, pride of Catherine. So Catherine the shrew was always proud and you know uh, uh, adamant, stubborn. And then here what has happened? H extreme hunger because she is so hungry that she can have anything even if the food is not cooked properly she could have had it but here he is not really giving him the food so she uh, all that hunger that extreme hunger in her had abated the pride of Catherine had reduced limited had made it small her pride has now become uh, limited it has been now reduced so it has lessened uh, and had made her uh, good now so uh, uh, so uh, it made her uh, say though angered to the heart I pray you let it stand so he asked uh, she asked uh, Patricio to let remain the food let the dish be there so that he doesn't take it away so let's move on to the next page you can see she's very hungry the food is laid there and Patricio is praying here. You can see Patricio is praying before the prayer, uh, before the meal there, uh, he is praying. And as soon as she is about to start uh, eating, he again goes on praying. So if you have seen the film strip of this part, you will understand what I mean here. So she is praying when he prays and then she bounces on the foot because she is very, very extremely hungry. But as soon as she does it, he starts praying again. So he's making fun of her. Doesn't want to give her food immediately. So that she feels very, very hungry. So she said, I pray you let it stand. Let the food remain there. But this was not all Patricio intended to bring her to. And he replied. So Patricio uh, intended uh, to bring her or to make her realize, to soften her stab. Uh, so what did he do? He made her realize, he wanted to make her realize uh, this was not all that um, he wanted her to understand. So what did she, uh, he do? Uh, he said, the poorest service is repaid with thanks and so shall mine before you touch the meat. So he said, the poorest service, even the worst service, even if it uh, he is not um, providing her properly <coughs> even the poorest service is repaid with thanks so everyone thanks the person who uh, does some kind of good to others so he deserves praise but then uh, so shall uh, you have not done it so shall mine before you touch the meat and you are going to thank me before you really touch the meat so he said that before you touch the meat, you must thank me first. So come on, thank me first. On this, Catherine brought out a reluctant, I thank you, sir. So very reluctantly, very hesitatingly, Catherine said, I thank you, sir. And now he suffered her to make a slender meal, saying, much good maid, do your gentle heart, Kate, eat a pace. So what did he do? He said, uh, he said there, um, uh, he gave her, he uh, suffered her, meaning he uh, subjected her to make a limited meal. He uh, forced her to make a very limited meal, meaning he didn't allow her to eat uh, the, all the meat there. He, although he brought uh, her the meat or the dish or the food, 
he didn't allow her to eat properly so it was a slender meal meaning a limited meal meaning uh, just a little of the morsel he uh, she could eat much good may do her gentle uh, heart kate eat a pace so he said um, uh, kate i am giving you uh, this uh, come on uh, eat it uh, you have your hearts full eat a pace meaning a pace means quickly uh, eat fast come on and now my honey love we, we will return to your father's house and revel it as bravely as the best so he is announcing and now my honey love we will return to your father's house we'll go to your father's house and revel celebrate we are going to celebrate enjoy as bravely as the best as we can with silken coats and caps and golden rings so we are going to enjoy by dressing ourselves in our best fineries with ruffs and scarfs ruffs is touched frill worn during shakespeare's time so it was uh, men used to wear um, very you know starched frill on their uh, collars they used to have and scarves so you can see scarves of course you know what scarves are ladies also wear men also wear and fans and double change of fi finery and will take a lot of clothes also to change and to make her believe he really intended to give her these gay things he called in a tailor and a haberdasher so what did he do uh he is uh, you know making her feel happy with all the make believe things that he is telling her and he tells her to make her believe he really intended he really wanted to give her these happy things gay things means happy things he called in a tailor and he is calling in a tailor and a haberdasher so who's a haberdasher he is a dealer in small articles or small items used in sewing so a uh, dealer or a shopkeeper who keeps items for a tailor uh, that is uh, small items that is meant for tailoring who brought some new clothes he had ordered for her and then giving and then giving her oh i went at the back and then giving her a plate to the servant to take away before she had half satisfied her hunger he said what have you done so he showed her the plate and the meat, plate with the meat and before she had half satisfied her hunger before she had taken a little morsel a few morsels and then he said what have you done what have you had so uh, we see here kate uh, trying to uh, trouble patricio uh, and then before he uh, she could satisfy her hunger he said what have you done what have you had the haberdashers presented a cap saying here is the cap your worship bespoke here is the cap that your so the haberdasher came with a cap a cap that will uh, suit uh, patricio and a cap that would suit um, catherine so he brought a cap along with him and he showed it to patricio saying that Uh, this is the cap you to uh, spoke about on which patricio began to storm afresh and again patricio started to get angry storm afresh means once again he started to become very very angry saying the cap was molded in a porringer saying that the cap was uh, made in a pan and that it was no bigger than a cockle or walnut shell that the cap was very small and that it was like a cockle a cockle is a shell or walnut shell desiring the haberdasher to take it away and make a bigger one so he uh, you know actually is pretending to be very angry with the haberdasher that he has brought a very small cap instead of a very big one that could fit catherine's head and then he told him to take it away and make a bigger one catherine said i will have this all gentle women wear such caps as these so catherine reiterated that no i am going to have this give it to me i'll have this and all ladies wear such caps when you are gentle replied patricio 
you shall have one too and not till then so patricio told her that you will not have that cap as long as you are gentle so when you become gentle i'll give you this kind of a hat uh, the meat catherine had eaten had a little rev- uh, had a little revived her fall in spirits and she said so the meat catherine had eat, eaten had given her a little energy and now her fallen spirits had been revived so she was able to talk uh, loudly to uh, patricio why sir i trust i may have leave to speak and speak i will so she once again started speaking like the way she was used to speak earlier and she said why sir you must allow me to speak and speak i will i am going to talk i am no child no babe your betters have endured to hear me say my mind so she said that look i am no child i am not a baby that uh, you won't allow me to talk because i am going to say my mind and if you cannot you had better stop your ears so she was angry once again and she started uh, talking to patricio in a rude manner patricio would not hear these angry words for he had happily discovered a better way of managing his wife than keep up a jangling argument with her so patricio was uh, did not want to hear his wife speak in angry tone and he was not happy and he had uh, seen a better way of managing uh, uh, restricting his wife uh, having control over his wife or keeping up a jangling a loud quarrel or an argument with her so let's see here she's arguing with patricio therefore his answer was why you say true it's a paltry cap so he is a, a way of now instead of getting angry he said why you are saying the truth or true thing that it's a paltry cap it's a, a really small paltry means really it's a very small cap and i love you for not liking it and although she said she liked it he is uh, feigning or he is pretending that he thinks uh, she does not like it love me or love me not said catherine i like the cap and i will have this cap or none so catherine again shows her anger and she says you love me or not i like the cap and i have that cap you say you wish to see the gown immediately patricio changes the subject and he says no you wanted to see the gown still affecting to misunderstand her still affecting pretending to misunderstand her to not to understand what she is saying the tailor then came forward and showed her fine gown he had made for her now here comes the tailor once again and shows her the gown that she, he had prepared for her patricio whose intent was that she should have neither cap nor gown found much fault with that once again patricio started finding fault with the gown that the trailer had made actually it was a very pretty gown that he had got it done for catherine but he did not want her to uh, allow her to wear it so oh mercy heaven said he what masking stuff is this and then he tried to find fault with the gown and he said oh my god what kind of a material is this what do you call this a sleeve oh my god look at this the sleeve is not proper it is like a demi cannon and it looks like something a cannon not a sleeve but a cannon a, a big uh, sort of a round shaped thing carved up and down like an apple tart and it looks as if it is an apple tart a delicacy made with apple the tailor said you bid me make it according to the fashion of the times you told me to make it according to the modern times and catherine said she never saw a better fashion gown and catherine once again said that this is a beautiful a uh, very good fashion gown a newly fashion gown and she liked it she appreciated it this was enough for patricio once again patricio was very very uh, angry and he wanted to feign and he wanted to show that he is not happy and privately 
uh, so secretly he desires desiring these people might be paid for their goods an excuse is made to them for the seemingly strange treatment he bestowed upon them so uh, patricio secretly desired that those people uh, the especially the tailor and the harbor and uh, this man the dealer who had come with the uh, things so haberdasher and the tailor both of them will be paid properly for what they had done the for the things they had brought here but uh, he didn't want to show it uh, clearly in front of his wife because the treatment he is giving his wife uh, they may uh, find it very awkward so he with fierce words and furious gestures drove the tailor and the haberdasher out of the room and he showed he was very angry and he was furious angry and with anger the gestures he drove the tailor he sent them away out of the room and then turning to catherine he said well come my kate we will go to your father's even in these mean garments we now wear so he told catherine come my dear we are going to your father's house in this mean bad or uh, poor garments that we are now wearing but then things began to change things are changing for catherine you can see she is crying she is no more the old catherine the hot tempered catherine the arrogant catherine the catherine who was loud tongued she is no more that and then he ordered his horses affirming they should reach baptista's house by dinner time then he called for the horses because they were now going to uh, baptista's house a uh, father's house and that it was but 7 o'clock for that it was 7 o'clock now it was not early morning but the very middle of the day so it was the middle of the day and when he spoke this therefore catherine ventured to say though modestly being almost overcome by the vehemence of his manner so what happened uh, uh, catherine feared that if he uh, if uh, she says something uh, he would not take her to her father's house and then uh, he told her uh, that uh, look uh, it is uh, the middle of the day i dare uh, then she said i dare assure you sir it is 2 o'clock and will be supper time before we get there so she said that look it's already 2 o'clock and by the time we reach Uh, my father's house it will be supper time that is dinner time so it would take us a long journey and it will take us several hours to reach there but patricia meant that she should be so completely subdued that she should assent to everything he said and patricia meant patricia thought that she should be so much subdued she should be so much Uh, brought under his control that whatever whatever he says she should consent to assent means she should agree to everything that he said before he carried her to her father's house and therefore as if he were lord even of the sun and could command the hours he said it should be what time he pleased to have it before he set forward so he told her look whatever i say should be the time if i say this is the time then this is the time if i say that is the time then that is the time for said he whatever i say or do you still are crossing it look you are uh, uh, contradicting my words and i don't want you to cross my words i will not go today so because you do this we are not going today to your father's house when i go it shall be what o'clock i said so he said that when I, when we go it it will be the time that i tell you another day catherine was forced to practice her newly found obedience and uh, next day or another day catherine was forced was compelled to practice to uh, behave uh, in with full obedience to her husband and not till he had brought her proud spirit to such a perfect subjection so 
uh, he had brought her proud arrogant character into subjection that is subordination or uh, under his control that she dared not remember there was such a word as contradiction so by the time catherine had become very very subjugated or uh, very much under the control of patricio and she dare not con- contradict his statement so whatever he said she would agree would patricio allow her to go to her father's house so she very much wanted to go to her father's house but she was uh, she and that is why she did not want to uh, say anything that go, go, went against or made patricio angry and even while they were upon their journey thither thither is old english for there she was in danger of being turned back again so there even then uh, although she went to uh, she was going to uh, her father's house already traveling she still feared that if she says anything against him what will happen he'll turn back from there and say we are not going today because she happened to hint it was the sun and suddenly she said it was the sun when he affirmed the moon shone brightly at noon day when he said that it was the moon shining brightly at the middle of the afternoon did you understand so uh, he said that it's the moon shining in the middle of the afternoon and she had to obey you can see the surprise on her face now by my mother's son who is the mother's son he himself isn't it said he that is myself it shall be the moon or stars or what i list so he said that look catherine whatever i say if i say it's the moon or the stars or whatever i say whatever i list whatever i say before i journey to your father's house so whatever i say before i reach your father's house i am whatever i say you have to uh, agree to it he then made as if he were going back again and then he showed as if he was turning back and returning but catherine no longer catherine the shrew now catherine was no longer the shrew she had completely changed and now she was the obedient wife said let us go forward let us go forward let us continue our journey i pray i am requesting you now we have come so far we have already traveled so far it shall be the sun or moon or what you please whatever you say let it be the sun or the moon or whatever you say and if you please to call it a rush candle henceforth i i vow it shall be so for me so whatever you say it is i'll agree i vow i take an oath i promise it shall be so it shall be whatever you say this he was resolved to prove and this patricio wanted to prove that his wife was subjugated and he, his wife would agree whatever he said his wife would agree upon it therefore he said again i say it is the moon and he wanted to test her so he said look it's the moon up above in the, during the afternoon when it was afternoon he showed her the sun and said look it's the moon i know it's the moon replied catherine and what did catherine say i know it is the moon although she very much knew that it was the uh, sun you lie it is the blessed sun said patricio then patricio once again said come on you are lying it is the blessed sun then it is the blessed sun said catherine so now you can see she agrees upon uh, her husband and i hope you have understood very clearly as much as we have read so we have completed up to page 102 and in the next class we will have the last part of the uh, uh, the story and understand it thank you